He died for nothing. Hi guys, how are you all doing? Your boy Al is here with episode A review of Demon Slayer season 4 so let's get things rolling. At first we see Muzan make a dramatic entry into the Abayashiki mansion. Shinazugawa and his Kasugai crow alert the Slayers and Hashiras of the impending danger. Meanwhile, Kagaya greets Muzan, mentioning they share the same bloodline, though distantly, due to Muzan's birth a millennium ago. Kagaya captures Muzan's attention by explaining how his clan has been cursed for producing a monster like Muzan. After consulting a priest, they were instructed to devote their lives to annihilating demons. By marrying daughters of priests, the Ubuyashiki clan managed to dilute the curse, but no Ubuyashiki child has ever lived past 30. The ailing master of the demon court keeps Muzan entertained while the demon watches Hinaki and Nichika playing in the distance, singing a haunting melody. It looks like I was right about Muzan and Kagaya being related, but Muzan not knowing about it was pretty meh. Also, I will be blunt here, this part annoyed the hell out of me even though it gave us more insight about Kagaya's character, because they dragged it too much. Then we see Kagaya claims to know Muzan's desire, eternity, but explains that true eternity is the human will, which lasts forever. He asserts that even if he dies, the Demon Slayer core will continue, but if Muzan dies, all demons will vanish. Angered by these words, Muzan prepares to kill Kagaya. Meanwhile, all the Hashiras and Tanjiro rush towards the Abuyashiki mansion. In a flashback, it's revealed that the Abuyashiki family, despite facing constant danger, has never used the Hashiras for their own protection. Haimajima explains to the other Hashiras that Kagaya always insisted the Hashiras are a valuable resource not to be used for his personal safety. This part gave us some insight about Muzan's character, and it looks like he is not very clear about his own desires. I didn't like this, because I think the story will try to show that Muzan is a product of circumstances, rather than being pure evil. Also being overly selfless is never a good thing in real life in my opinion. Moving on we see that as the Hashiras rush towards the Abuyashiki mansion, it erupts in flames, resulting in an explosion that kills the Abuyashiki family. Muzan narrowly escapes and realizes he walked into Kagaya's trap. Expecting the Hashiras to arrive soon, he is suddenly immobilized by a blood demon art that pierces him with millions of spikes. As he absorbs the spikes to free himself, Tamayo lodges her fist inside his body. In the process of absorbing, Muzan also absorbs Tamayo's fist and everything within it, which turns out to be a drug that turns demons back into humans. Kagaya setting up such a shallow trap, and Muzan falling for it, shows that they both underestimated each other far too much, which is pretty moronic, especially coming from them. Also it's really funny that Muzan didn't even notice Tamayo's presence. Next we see that Muzan can't believe it's possible. Through a conversation with Tamayo, we learn she requested to become a demon to live longer and see her children grow into adulthood, but she ended up killing her family and many humans. I killed scores of them out of despair. And to atone for my sins, I'm going to die right here with you. Tamayo declares as Haimajima arrives and beheads Muzan. A flashback reveals that Kagaya orchestrated the plan with only Haimajima as a confidant, knowing the other Hashiras wouldn't accept their master as bait. It is also revealed that Haimajima met Kagaya when he was 14 and Haimajima was 19. Additionally, we discover that Kagaya's power of foresight allowed him to anticipate Muzan's arrival at the mansion. Tamayo's hatred for Muzan makes a lot more sense now. I mean she pretty much got tricked into becoming a demon and lost everything dear to her in the process. Also knowing how young most of these characters are is making me feel old. At the end we see that in the present, Muzan regenerates his head, signaling that the Hashiras will have to engage in a prolonged battle with him until sunrise as Kagaya believes only the sun can kill Muzan. As the Hashiras arrive to find the mansion in flames, they charge at Muzan. However, Muzan invokes the Infinity Castle, causing everyone, including all the Demon Slayers, to be pulled inside. It looks like Muzan can easily drag everyone inside Infinity Castle, so him not doing the same to capture Nezuko or Kagaya just doesn't make sense. 
Also I will give credit where it's due, the animation was top notch like always. Nonetheless, people are loving the cliffhanger ending for the season, but it was announced that the next arc will be adapted into three movies because it requires extra time, so even if we assume they will keep 18 months gap between each release, it will already be 2029 by the time the next arc ends, and I'm not sure how I feel about that. Anyways thanks for watching everyone. If you like my video then check out some of my other videos. Also don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel or leave a comment if you want to say something, you can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram or check out my Facebook page, links are given in the description until then see ya.